Hello everyone, Maurice and welcome to Tanks and Invest, where we talk about investing, finance, and professional development. For today's video, it is timber business only. The stock we're going to talk about today would be CCIV, Churchill Capital, or Lucid Motor. So it's been a while since I last covered Churchill Capital or CCIV as a stock as a whole. And with respect to just this week so far, CCIV has been up about 24% so far. So it's been a great, great green week for a lot of investors that are in CCIV like myself as well. And with respect to what is the main catalyst of driving this surge, despite the whole sell-off that we've been experiencing in Q1 and Q2 so far, ever since that huge boom across the whole EV sector last year, right? The propelment of the stock of you know upping 24% is mainly driven by one of the articles that came out from Bazinga recently with respect to their depictions around a company called Revillian. Revil- automotive uh, which is a company that's backed by amazon.com and also by ford motors right and what this company does is basically an electric truck startup based in the u.s right and based on wall street consensus so far they are proposing a valuation of 70 billion dollars in enterprise value which if you compare that with Lucid Motor or CCIV, which obviously they do comparable offering in terms of the vehicle propositions, that Lucid Motor based on current valuation is trading around like the $35 billion mark, right? Which is obviously a 50% discount in comparison to the Revivian, I can't even pronounce the name, Revivian Automotive, right? So I'm going to go through a technical analysis to see where I see the stock price going from here, right? What are we thinking about with respect to the resistance level we should be buying at in case that we we should be foreseeing a dip going forward or we're going to see more of a surge going forward? And my price target for you in 2021 as well. So stay tuned, stay around, let's make some money. Moving on to the technical analysis of CCIV, and I'm going to begin with just the historical depiction of how it looks like so far before I move on to the more of the foreshadowing projections going forward. Okay, so with respect to historical, right, in January when the company started to trade trade on New York Stock Exchange, it started around like the ten dollars mark and nine fifty mark, which makes sense, right? Most spec- special acquisition vehicle or spec, like the way you would call it typically trade around those level, right? And subsequent to that, because of a lot of positive media affectation with respect to one of the Saudi prints, uh, you know, have, uh, have shown an indication of interest of potentially purchasing about $3.7 billion uh, of, uh, of position into CCIV, you know, which will subsequently become a company called Lucid Motor, which is a, a US-based uh, electric vehicle company that is on a more of a higher price end spectrum, right? Think of it as a like more expensive Tesla, if you might, right? And subsequent to that, because of the fact that, you know, we had that huge euphoric pump, you know, across the whole EV market as well, that we subsequently drove the stock all the way up from the $10 mark to the $64.86 mark, which is a 640% of gains from that level, right? And ever since then, because of the whole Q1 and Q2 sector rotations, the chip shortage that we experience, and also on top of that, just on a technical perspective, you can see how much of a gap that we've formed historically, right? You could see how much of a big pump that we've had in Courier, and subsequently, we basically logically need to fill that gap in a psychological level to sustain the growth going forward, right? And also on top of that, a lot of negative media affectations coming from obviously the Federal Reserve with respect to inflation scares and also with respect to the trade tensions that were also you know collaborating or you know try to dissolve you know between US and China going forward and also on top of that with respect to just a lot of you know negative media affectation with respect to the CPAC report that we've been getting on a, you know basically monthly basis right that every single time it seems to be a disappointment among you know investors consensus and you know sediments and which subsequently drove a lot more negative pressure um, and CCIV is one of those stocks that are in the highest of the growth stock spectrum on top of that is the EV stock as well which subsequently you know um, puts the stock in a very poor position for that long-term sustainability growth right which subsequently drove this huge mega sell-off right from the $64 mark dip at one point you know uh, to the $22.74, dollars 27 level, and subsequent to that, you know, with that black swan event, the to the three dollars uh, on on March 5th, uh, March fifth, 
dip to the twenty dollars and uh, eighty four cents level, right? And ever since that, we kind of consolidated this sideways right now, and we're kind of hovering for quite some time now, based on how the chart is set up, right? However, if you you could take a look, right, the staircase has been more of like a downward escalated staircase so far, right? So it hasn't really been, you know, it's been not relatively bearish, right? Because again, right, you see every single dip, it kind of occur like mid of the of the of, of each month and the reason that you see like a slight pump of every single time and then sell off is again right that CPI report affectation right people have that you know anticipation that the report is going to come out relatively positive but people get more of a mediocre type of lukewarm feeling after they read the report and they're like oh it's not that great so and subsequent drive more of a sell off right and Every single time is kind of like an emotional roller coaster, like a minimal emo emotional roller coaster that kind of hype people up in a way, and then oh, so it's kind of that type of feel. Uh, obviously, some reports you know came out a little bit better than other, and also sometimes you know with respect to those bi monthly speech that we get from the Federal Reserve on those like inflation scares, and also with respect to the tax adjustments, those also have some macroeconomical affectation to the stock, right? And some of those events, you know, uh, both positive and negative, has subsequently drove the stock all the way down to the bottom, the seventeen twenty five, right? And ever since then, we are, you know, basically hitting the bottom, retesting that level that we've seen back in the day uh, on January nineteenth, which is basically the beginning of where we started all from the the beginning, right? When we were basically just starting on trading on the New York Stock Exchange, right? And ever since then, we basically are reversing upward. And there was a really great bullish sign that we crossed the MACD uh, at one point on May 18, which was an indicator that it was going to be a reversal, right? And at that point, the RSI was over dipped, which, you know, that was a, a very logical foreshadow that the company, that, that the stock was going to go reversing upward from there, right? Especially you see the, the golden cross that we see here, right? Well, that's how people typically call it, right? And ever since then, we're kind of reversing, but more of a logical perspective, right? And the recent time, because of the news that we just got, right, that evaluation of the stock, you know, that uh, that's going to be IPO coming up, backed by Amazon.com and Ford Motor, the company called Revivian, a U.S.-based EV company. They value, based on Wall Street consensus, $70 billion in enterprise value, right? Which, if you compare that with CCIV or Lusso Motor, the current valuation right now is 35 billion which is basically half of it right and with respect to that specific comparison uh investors or wall street consensus think that oh you know ccib might be highly undervalued now, right so, which subsequently drove this like mega green candle right and this is a combination of both um a corporate investor but subsequently a lot of retail investors that subsequently chase it right However, currently you can see that we broke through the psychological resistance level at the twenty dollars and fifty eight cents level, and this is again a mental resistance level that we've been testing historically, right? You can see how many times we've tested in the past, right? Mo like more than ten times historically, and ever since the, the the beginning of last year as well, right? You can see that um, that's something that we've been uh, retesting and kind of you know struggling around those levels for quite some time right so what i see the stock going forward from here despite this whole two pump is that we're going to be kind of consolidating around these level right here right around like the 24 15 uh 23 60 dollars level because that's a very strong psychological resistance level that we've been forming you can see that we formed that once twice three four five six seven seven times and then i could go go back even more a bunch of times here as well, right? So I do foresee like this as a relatively new base, um, you know, as a you know, as a new form of consolidation level, a platform that we're building, right? So right now I feel a little bit more comfortable with respect to this news um, as a catalyst of propelling the stock to go upward from here. However, in the near term, I do see some sort of like a sell off back down to like the twenty one dollars level. Or somewhere around like the low twenties, because you do need to test that, right? Because this was uh, relatively too uh, positive because of that again, right? That that article, and also on top of that, the MACD and the RSI right now, you can see how cross, despite how 
how bullish the, the MACD looks right now. Uh, however, the separations of the lines and the durations of the spread separation has been enduring for you know a much wider spread in comparisons to historical trends, right? Every, you, you can see that historically the spread was never really that wide in comparisons to the spread that we have right now, right? So as we are coming back, so I foresee you know the RSI to be slowly correcting downwards um, and, and as a form of second base of consolidation and then we test that back upward right so do I foresee us uh, to be seeing some sort of like a downward pressure next week I think we might and I think we are kind of seeing it right now as we speak um, despite the market being closed right now well, I do see a MACD slowly you know fusing it together and then cross down and then we will see how that uh, the cross will be formed, right? Because if we see more of a negative pressure next week, you know, again, right, on June 10th, on Thursday next week, is the CPI report that's coming out, right? So the CPI re report is either going to go two ways, right? One is going to be a very positive report that's going to propel the equity market to go up. And if it does, we will basically fly up from here, right, going all the way. From this level of the 2395 all the way to the next level of resistance at the 27 um at the yeah basically the 27 the 2697 dollars level that will be like the next leap up that we we'll get there we're basically like a 12 percent gains from there but if we don't we'll basically go back down to the 2207 or even possibly crash down even all the way to the 1960 if we get a really negative cpi report right so that's something to look out for. You know, these are again, right? We have seen these like type of uh, roller coaster ride based on the CPI report on a monthly basis now, right? Which is re which is the reason why you see these like type of um, you know, spiral or like these type of uh, curves up and down, up and down, right? These type of waves, like I'm trying to say, right? So something to look out for, and I do foresee the wave coming. Um, that and I and my my uh, my assessment. Uh, or my projection is that the CPI report is going to come out relatively lukewarm, uh, in my opinion, based on just historical trend, trends, right? It has been negative consecutively every single time. Well, not negative in a way that is like detrimental, but negative in a way that is lukewarm and doesn't convey like strong confidence across the market. And just a little bit of those like type of um, sentiments or just a little bit of like more propensity leaning towards the negative side would be enough to kind of tip the market over and have more of a sell-off subsequently, right? And I think CCIB would be in the bad position to be in that uh, sell-off, right? Knowing the fact that we have pumped up and it was pumped up, you know, non-substantively, right? It was just pumped up by, again, right, that news article that came out in more of a comparison type of optics rather than actual substantive production level or earnings type of uh, substantive business fundamental driven type of pump. So I think CCIV will see will likely see some sort of sell-off coming and retest this level again, right, the 2202. Uh, if worst case scenario, go back down to like the low um, 20s or even like the low 20s at the 19 level. Um, and uh, I hope I hope the CPI report will come up positive because we all want, you know, the equity market to go back up, right? Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, uh, again, I'm not a wizard. I don't have premonition to understand how the CPI report is being written and what the, even the incentives behind, like, who's writing what and why they're writing the way it is um, on, you know, influencing the market a certain way. So that's something to look out for, but these are the levels that we need to further test and further understand. So again, I wouldn't like completely load up your whole cash balance into this stock, you know, knowing the fact that we're pumped up so much by like 24% this week. I would dollar cost average at these resistance levels here, right? Like the first 121, the second one would be like the 1956. And if we crash down even more, I think that's truly the bottom, like the seventeen sixty dollars level. That's a highly undervalued stock at this level. Basically, you know, in comparison to Revivian, which is valuing about seventy billion, at these level will be somewhere around like the twenty billion, which is you know like basically one third of the valuation in comparison to Revivian, which is uh you know they doing basically very comparable offering in the EV sector. So. 
uh, something to look out for in the valuation perspective. Okay, so just to recap on all the numbers that we just talked about in the technical analysis, I think the newly formed resistance level will be the $22 mark, right? Based on the news article that just came out on Revivian evaluation, uh, you know, in comparisons to the Lucid Motor valuation at the moment, right? So $22 mark would be a first level to dollar cost average in case you want to build your position for a long term or just, you know, dollar cost average down based on, you know, maybe you bought on the, on the top before that you want a dollar cost average. I think these are optimal level to start doing so or building your position for the first time. And I think the next level, if we have a negative sentiment around, you know, more negative media affectation on the news or negative media affectation from the CPI report that we'll be getting in the next, you know, about a week from now, right, uh, on the 10th of June, then the 1950 would be a logical place for us to land and then consolidate from there before the pump up. And if we even get down to a black swan event of the 1750, which the likelihood of getting there would be like relatively minimal, I would give this maybe 2% probability in the near future or next week. But, you know, contingent on obviously the CPI report that will be coming, right? Um, if it's like really, really substantively negative, getting to this level would break through like three walls here, right? To For us to get to this level. And that's possible. Um, and everything is possible in, in stock market. So that's something to you need to like mentally prepare yourself for to anticipate for that level, right? So keep your cash balance on the side despite, you know, um, you know whatever happens, right? And I think the year-end price target will be $55 based on the evaluation that the company should be performing going forward and uh, how it's going to be trending based on the technical analysis and also on a discounted cash flow analysis perspective as well, the $55 mark. And with respect to how it will generate an upside on a return on investment perspective, $22 mark buying it right now will give you a 150 of an upside percentage and 2.5 times of your money from here, which is an enormous gain in the short-term perspective. That's it for today with respect to my technical analysis on CCIV, Churchill Capital. Hopefully you guys enjoy my technical analysis and getting some insights around, you know, the clarity and the transparencies and the logics that I'm putting out here for you guys. I really appreciate you. Uh, hope you guys have a great, you know, weekend and uh, rest of your week so going forward. Uh, and please hit the like button, subscribe, and also that bell notification. And watch out for the next video coming up. Take care.